Hey everyone. So I have another patient here. This guy came from uh, another repair cafe that I volunteered for. Uh, the gentleman brought this in, said it was not working. So I took a quick look at it. You know, no life whatsoever. I did take a look at it, found that it had a discontinuity in uh, fuse. So I took it home. I figured I'd take you along for the ride of the diagnostic and repair so that you can see what goes into this as well. There are, you can see here, one, two, three screws. So we're gonna take those out. Okay. There we go. Yeah, there's a little lip here in the plastic. So now we can lift this up and over. Now there are some connections we have to pay attention to. I'm just going to lay this down on the front. Yeah, we have to watch out for this cable. So here's the cord coming in. This is the connection to the transformer, and then the fuse is down here. I'm just going to get in here with the finger, pop that, and then lift that off. Oops. There we go. <laughs> After I buzzed out the other side of the fuse to see that it wasn't shorted, because maybe the transformer had a short in it, I didn't see any signs that there was a fault. So I tacked this wire in and verified that the radio started working again. So let's remove the transformer. Speakers. I'm gonna unplug those. Where's that? That's tucked. Oh, that's tucked all around there. Okay. So yeah, we want to get that out of the way. I'll unplug that. Okay. Okay. So let's see. So this transformer comes out of the way. Definitely a tight design here. <laughs> so let's see, let's take a look here. I don't see any outward signs of overheating. Okay, so we'll move that out of the way. Let's remove the screws securing the speaker assembly. I see two on each side. Oh, that whole thing slides out. Front panel slides out, which gives access to the flat flex cable connector. Let's unplug that to get the top assembly out of the way. There we go. Slide that out. I'm gonna slide this back into place just so it doesn't get messed up. Now, if I can see if there's any other fasteners holding this in place. I will give Bose a lot of credit though. I mean, the way they do their acoustic design, very small speakers with these chambers. That's how they get their nice bass sound with such small speakers. And yep, there is a screw down buried. Okay, so the CD player is actually floating. I also credit them, they are using all of the same type of fastener, which is nice. Right, next, let's unplug the two connectors for the CD player. We'll get that out of the way. And lift this out. And just lay that down. Now, the speaker assembly should lift out. All right. So you can see there's the wire that I put in to diagnose. But let's get this wire out since this is not appropriate. Here we go. Okay. Get the wire out of there.
and remove this. Just gently rock these. See if I can get under this. There we go. Rip the battery. Terminal there. This has that nine volt backup. And if we take this and flip it over. Okay. And who knows, it could have been a power surge. Something could have happened, but luckily this was the sacrificial lamb and nothing else appears to be damaged within the radio. So let's uh, order a new fuse and get installed. So let's take a look at the existing one. I want to match up the bends, which looks to be about the width of my pliers. Sorry, I'm trying to do this, make sure the camera can see it. Okay. There we go, we're in there. All right, time to grab my trusty old Radio Shack solder and install a fuse. And then let's trim the excess length on the leads. Gently set the PC board back into the base and press at the retainer clips until they snap in place over the board. Be gentle. I broke one of the retainer clips trying to get the board out. This foam that I'm guessing is to secure the wires so they don't rattle is completely disintegrating due to its age. It appears to attach with some sort of adhesive layer, so I'm going to try to peel off what I can. Uh, let's see if this shop towel with some rubbing alcohol might help. Ooh, that looks like it's working. It's not the best, but it is a lot better. Now i got to find some replacement foam. As you can see, this stuff left more crumbs than a toddler at breakfast. I found some foam. This is actually from a mattress pad. And basically just slid it and put that in place. So that should give it the security to hold the wire. Tuck that, plug that in. That in. Okay, so that is now connected. I'm going to pull these out of the way. That's seated. Those are going to duck in there. And then we're going to line up the screw bosses on either side. All right, let's reconnect the CD player harnesses. I found I needed to keep a finger against the laser assembly to keep it from sliding. Be careful, this stuff is very delicate. Try to avoid putting f excessive force on the wires themselves. Reinstalling the CD player was a bit tricky. Uh, while holding it, make sure the wires sit in the respective channels. gonna slide in and we have to guide the cables okay. all right speaker connections are next plug the connectors into their respective receptacles And secure the wires into the guides. Okay. Pay attention to the orientation of the transformer connector. Pins 1 and 8 are noted on the PC board and on the connector. I couldn't get my fingers in to seat the transformer connector, so I found I had to lift the speaker assembly back out to gain access. So I suggest plugging in the transformer before completely seating the speaker assembly. 
even then using a tool to push down ended up working okay. best like I'm doing here. All right, let's put all this stuff back in again. Let's get the transformer back into its spot. Okay. Tuck that in there, tuck that in there. And then plug in the primary connector and then the power cord. Goes on there. And then that plugs in there. Okay. I forgot that I needed the front panel up to connect the top control cable. So let's do that now. Again, be gentle when pushing the flat flex cable into its connector. Okay. There we go. Now we'll lift that up. Get that into position. Now we got it. Let's just try it and make sure everything works first. We've got clock. That's a good sign. And we've got radio. Let's get the screws in. This comes out. Just use a tweezer here. Get it down in there. Okay. Watch out for the cables as you replace the CD player assembly. Make sure the cables are properly seated in their channels. Carefully line up the top and slide it into position, remembering that the thicker foam is going to give some resistance. Finally, install the three cover screws. I used some compressed air to get rid of any foam crumbs that remained. this back in. Make sure we don't have any scraping. All right, we got another patient rescued. So I'm gonna uh, call the owner, tell him that his radio's ready. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little adventure of kind of diagnosing and figuring out uh, a fix. I will give uh, Bose props for their engineering to be able to squeeze that much in and out of these little tiny speakers get some pretty good uh, bass out of them. So pretty impressed. Thank you so much for watching. As always, hit that like and subscribe button. Helps support the channel. Till the next video, see you later.